Hello and welcome to Plugin of the Day. The guitar I'm going to be using in the video today is this beautiful Gretsch Electromatic guitar. Okay, so I'm going to start back to front in this video. We'll start with the cabinet emulation and microphones that I'm using, and then we're going to move on to the TPA-1, which is the focus of this video. So we'll start with the cabinet emulation again. I'm using an orange cab because the actual analog preamp I'm using is by orange as well, and we'll come on to that in a moment. So I'm using a 4x12, orange cab here so it's this one here the 4x12 ppc 412 i'm using a dynamic 57 sm57 microphone and also a 160 ribbon mic we're in this room here and along with that working backwards at the end i've got a little bit of compression going on and in front of that i have a plate reverb just a subtle amount of it and then before that, I have this delay pedal. Okay, so this is all in post after the preamp and power amp. Let's have a look at what is going on before we get into Amplitude here. So the analog setup that I'm going through is as such. I'm going through the Boss NS2 noise suppressor then into the Boss TU3 Chromatic Tuner, then into the Raygun FX Super Fuzzboy, and that's a new addition to the studio, then into the Boss G7 Equalizer, and then into the preamp, and this is the Orange Guitar Butler preamp, and it is a really very good preamp I have found out by using it it's fully analog it's solid state it has clean and drive channels on it and that is why I'm using the orange cabinet here so we will move on to the TPA one by ignite amps next this is the ignite amps TPA one power amplifier tube power amplifier the great thing about this is that one it's free and I will leave a link in the description box below for you to download this secondly the other great thing about it is that you can use it with software and also hardware which is what I'm doing in this video as I described earlier I'm using the orange guitar butler preamp that is going into this software power amp especially if you are in the studio I mean if you're out on gigging you could have this on a laptop and you could have a guitar butler and your pedal board going into say an interface and then into a laptop and then out through the interface to a PA system with IRs so there's lots of different ways you can go about using this whether you're in a studio or playing live let's have a look from left to right at the front of the amp we have i'm playing in mono but you can go into stereo here with this switch then we have three knobs at the front we have depth presence and volume and they're all pretty self-explanatory i think everyone who has any little knowledge about amplifiers will know what these do. and then of course we have the power switch and we'll leave that on now if you see these little arrows at the right hand side if we click on those we go to the back panel and this is where most of the stuff is going on actually let's go through here oversampling if you're not sure what oversampling does basically in the digital world you tend to get this high pitched oddity in frequency the longer a note goes on so if you're playing a guitar or you're playing a guitar chord, if you leave it, you'll hear this aliasing as the longer note or chord stays. If your computer can handle it, I would always suggest you go to 8x because that will produce the best quality. It really depends on 
the power of your computer, what it can handle. Here I'm using ATEX. So that's just a brief description of why oversampling is good to use in the digital world. I'll come to the bottom section and then I'll come to the top section because I'm going to describe what these mean for those of you who don't know what bias and sagging are. So feedback is what it says, it, you know, the amount of feedback that you want coming through. Resonance will control, well this control will allow you to control the overall bass response of this amp. So resonance, the more you push it, the more bass frequency will come through. Output is self-explanatory. This is the overall output volume of this power amp. Above that we have the choice of three different tubes. So we've got, I'm using 6L6s, I'll keep it like that, but you can go to EL34s or KT88s, but we'll leave it on the 6L6s for here. And then this level will be the overall level of the input coming in. So if you wanted more input coming in, you can push it here. What's bias? Bias, basically, is with more voltage, biasing a tube, so this is a tube amplifier, digital form you'll get hotter tubes so the more you push the bias the hotter the tubes will get an overall saturated tone will be the consequence of that so that's what bias does sagging what's sagging uh, sagging basically is tube compression so the hotter the tubes get the more you push the sagging the more compressed the tone will be sag happens when the power amp transformer drops the voltage for a fraction of a second. The, the signal then sound choked like it would be if you're compressing quite a lot on a signal. So that basically is a brief description of what sagging does. Okay, so I think I've gone through everything there and we will move on with the rest of the video. If you're enjoying watching this video, please consider smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel so that I can keep on bringing this free content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Serbs out.